Section 7.3 is on page 526, talks about trigonometric substitution. And getting rid of a radical turns out to be more challenging than we would like. The following table is provided on the formula sheet that I uploaded in Canvas. You could always look it up. You could use that formula sheet on any test, starting with whichever you like. Uh, okay, and basically, they pretty much tell you what to do. Given the following radical, let x equal a, the sine of theta. Given the following radical, where you have two squares added, make the following substitution, and there it is. And that's why a sine, a tangent, and a secant arise a lot more than you like. Starting with the first problem, don't forget, every time you look at a problem, you're really trying to use the u sub if you can, that will save you a lot of pain. So looking at this problem, I am going to try different things now. Now that we're getting very close to 7, 5, and the u sub is there, I want to show you a few techniques that probably you never thought of. And if I follow accordingly to what they want, actually, if you look in the book on number 1 through 4, 1 through 3, they tell you what to do. They say, let, based on what they have, x equal, a is really 2, because that's what you score to get a 4. So that's 2, the tan of theta. The x is twice the secant square root of theta d theta. So this becomes the interval. This would be the square root. x is really what I'm substituting, and that's going to be twice tan of theta squared plus 4. And x cubed would become twice tan of theta cubed. And dx, don't underestimate dx, it's massive. <coughs> Some students just write d theta and they mess up the whole problem. So if I start with this problem, well, I notice that this is going to be the integral of, this is 8 the tangent cubed of theta times twice the secant square root of theta d theta over. Now, this radical is a special case. If I take the radical and I square it, that will be 4 the tangent square root of theta plus 4. And if I factor a 4 out, I will have a tangent square root of theta plus 1. And we know that tangent square root of theta plus 1 is secant square root of theta. And that will become a twice secant of theta. So these substitutions are chosen wisely in which the radical is eliminated every single time. This cancel with that and this cancels one of those. I'm left with 8 times the integral of tangent cubed of theta secant of theta d theta. And this is pretty much the highlight of this section. Basically what it does, it takes you to the previous section in which you're looking at integrals of sines and cosines, secants and tangent. So if I look at that, both of those are odd. I would really take, save a factor of secant of theta, tan of theta. That table is provided as well from section 7.2. That leaves me with tangent squared. And there's a catch, of course. There's always a catch. And I know that this is going to be the integral. This is going to be secant square root of theta minus 1, secant of theta, tan of theta d theta. Remember, this is my du. So now if I let u equal secant of theta, du is secant of theta, tan of theta, d theta. This was the main reason I didn't really work out and give you 7.3 right after 7.2. I wanted you to get 7.2 out of the way before we proceed. And that would be 8 times u cubed over 3 and u is secant minus u which is secant. And if you look closely we have a small tiny problem. I started the problem with x. You're giving me the answer in theta. That's not allowed. 
so what I need to do every time this is not a definite interval every single time I have to do this I have to go back to my traditional original substitution and say this means tan of theta equal x over 2 so if I draw my triangle going back to trig tangent is the opposite over the hypotenuse adjacent that makes this the square root of x squared plus 4 and what I want out of this is the secant the hypotenuse over the adjacent cubed over 3 minus again the secant And that would be my final answer. So something you should really work on. Now, I do want to show you a new trick, something you haven't thought of because it didn't come up yet. Notice, I could let u equal the inside of a radical, the argument of an angle, the argument of a log, the power of exponential, you know, du is 2x dx something you should start playing with and thinking a bit out of the box this is my u got it not a problem but when i glance at the top i say wait a minute if there is an x dx could be off by a constant can't i say this is x times x squared or even better x squared times x can't you say this is my du with one half? I put the color on the wrong piece. And what's left? I have an x squared left. Do I know what x squared equal? Of course I do. This is something you have not encountered yet, but you should start thinking about. Can't I say x squared is actually u minus 4 and what does this do well actually this makes the problem a lot nicer this is u over square root of u minus 4 u to the negative one half du so i would say this is one half the interval of u to the one half minus 4u to the negative 1 half du. Add 1 to the power, divide by that. Add 1 to the power, divide by that. That would be, if I factor the, if I distribute that in, it doesn't really matter. You could just leave it like that as well. That makes no difference. 2 thirds u to the 3 halves. That's the square root of u cubed minus 8 the square root of u plus c and if you recall what was u u was x squared plus 4 and if you distribute that n it matches and there it is something you should start considering i should try a u sub on every problem and if I can get around using what's in this section, good for you, you should. Not a problem. Now, I do want to show you another problem. So, again, if I look at this, I'm doing at least one of each, just to make sure that we see all of these different combinations. If I look at this, according to the table, so if I try a U-sub on this problem, it doesn't work, because I'll have an extra X floating around. If I let U equal 9 minus X squared, du will be negative 2x dx i don't know what to do with the x it's not, if i make this x times x then x square rooting takes you back to the same problem that's unwise so instead i glance at that u sub didn't work if i have a number minus x squared if i have a number minus x squared i'm gonna use the sign this is provided no need to memorize i'm gonna let x equal 3 the sine of theta dx is 3 the cosine of theta d theta and I'm going to fill in the blanks this is the square root of 9 minus if 
there is my x. That is 3 sine of theta. That is 3 sine of theta. And there is my dx. That is 3 that cosine of theta d theta. This is going to be the integral. This is going to be 9 sine squared of theta times 3 that cosine of theta d theta. This radical is going to be the square root of 9 minus 9 the sine squared of theta. If you factor a 9 out, and it's no big secret, this is going to be an identity every single time. So if I take the square root, oh, come on. If I take the square root of 9 cosine squared of theta of the 3 that cosine of theta, those cancel out. Again, somebody just figured out of these identities. We could have used the other 3, but it's the same thing. And that would be 9 times the sine squared of theta. And again, once you get rid of the radical, now you're back to the previous section. This is the integral of 1 minus the cosine of 2 theta divided by 2. d theta, that is 9 halves times theta minus the sine of 2 theta divided by 2. That is 9 halves times theta minus twice the sine of theta cosine of theta divided by 2. Of course, there's a plus c. I normally write a plus c at the end. And theta, let's see how this works. I have x equaling 3 the sine of theta, the original substitution. That means x over 3 equals the sine of theta. If I draw my triangle and I go by, sine is the opposite over hypotenuse. That makes it the square root of 9 minus x squared. You get that radical every time. Now, what does theta equal? If sine of theta equal x over 3, then theta equal the inverse sine of x over 3 minus the sine of theta times cosine of theta, plus c, of course. And what is the sine of theta? Opposite over hypotenuse. And what's the cosine of theta? Adjacent over hypotenuse. And that would be my answer. So, really smooth, not that bad. And how about if I looked at number 8? Number 8, the same deal. Now, if I look at that table, I am going to let t equal 4, the secant of theta. And if I take a derivative, that is 4 secant of theta, tan of theta, d theta. So this is the integral. And let's see how this works. I'm going to substitute t right there. And dt is right there. So dt is actually... 4 secant of theta, tan of theta, d theta. And t is actually 4 the secant of theta squared, the square root of 4 the secant of theta squared minus 16. Again, this was chosen wisely. It works all the time. 4 secant of theta, tan of theta, d theta. This is 16 secant squared of theta. And the radical, it would be wise to work it out on the side, otherwise you're going to do a lot of steps. 16 secant squared of theta minus 16. If you factor a 16 out, you get secant squared of theta minus 1. And guess what that is? That would be a 4 the tan of theta. And what do you notice? The force cancel out, the tangents cancel out, and this cancels one of those. You're simply left with, 1 over 16, the integral. 1 over sine is the co 1 over secant is the cosecant, is the cosine. And that is 1 over 16 sine of theta plus c. So that is 1 over 16. And I need to know what the sine of theta is. And I'm done. And if I go on the side and I say secant of theta equals t over 4, secant is hypotenuse over adjacent. That makes it the square root of t squared minus 16. And sine is the opposite over hypotenuse. And that would be my final answer. And there it is.